Hey, we're going to be looking at two methods of communication today, two simple concepts. So it might be tempting to skip this video, but actually you need to be able to evaluate between the two methods, which are going to be serial transmission and parallel transmission. And we've got to evaluate them and also suggest some uses. So it's slightly more than just defining them, but defining them is not going to be very difficult. So serial transmission is where data is sent one bit at a time. So data transmission is just movement of data, transferring data from one place to another. And it's done across a channel. A channel is a transmission medium, like the air or a wire, and that's how the data gets carried from one place to another. With the serial method, just one bit after another, and that's how the data is sent. And most cables, almost all cables, use this method, and that applies to both long and short distances. But we'll look at that in a few minutes' time in more detail. Uh, parallel, though, is where data is sent with multiple bits at a time. So multiple bits are being transferred at a time, and that means they have to use multiple channels. So it can't just use a single wire, it's got to use several different wires in order to facilitate this multiple data being sent. So an analogy is that serial is just like a one-way road, one after another bits get transferred, whereas parallel is like a multi-lane road, like a motorway or an A road, where we've got multiple lanes and the data is being sent at the same time as each other. So they're kind of in pairs, so in, well, pairs in this example, it could be eight lanes of traffic, eight channels that have been used, and eight bits will arrive at the same time in theory. So this is very much sequential transmission versus simultaneous transmission. So I feel like we're kind of pre-programmed to imagine that everything done in parallel is automatically better. In fact, this is an example where often serial transmission is better than parallel. So the most obvious reason perhaps is because it requires fewer wires. You, you need multiple wires to do this, it's not really done it needs to be done through wires essentially uh, and so this is going to take up less space and is cheaper to do and that's, a, that's often cost and space often the two most important reasons but they're not necessarily the most technical reasons so but then on the flip side the main advantage of parallel is that if they are if the data is moving at the same rate if it's clocked at the same rate parallel is going to transfer more data at a time so it's faster in other words because if we go back if they are moving at the same rate you know twice as much data is being transferred in this example so that's clearly um, better uh, but that is quite a big if it's quite a big caveat because actually there are some technical reasons why parallel is not as good so one of them is crosstalk this is where when you have electrical wires which are close together parallel is often just going to be several wires right next to each other the wires produce electromagnetic interference and this interference can cause corruption in its own signal and in neighboring signals as well. So this could cause a one to become a zero or the voltage level to be dropped so that it can't really be read. Lots of things which are gonna cause retransmission essentially. It's gonna cause corruption, it's gonna slow down the whole process as it's gotta be retransmitted. Possibly the best reason though why parallel is not as good as serial in, in lots of cases is skew. And skew is where timing issues cause bits to arrive at different times. So the bits are meant to arrive simultaneously, but any small delay if there's like a bend in the cable or any interference perhaps will cause not for the bits that are meant to arrive simultaneously to arrive slightly out of sync. So here are two wires, they're meant to arrive at the same point in time, they're meant to be in sync, but one has got slightly delayed and this is potentially going to cause at the very least a delay or it might have to be retransmitted because it can't be read properly. And actually all of these factors at high speeds or over long distances worsen. So this is a reason why actually parallel can only be used over very small distances because all of these issues become more pronounced, especially the first and third one to be honest. Crosstalk only applies to electrical cables, so fibre optic cables don't suffer from crosstalk because they're pulses of light, not electricity, but they definitely will suffer from skew. Going back to the statement here about them being clocked at the same rate or assuming they're clocked at the same rate, in reality you often have to reduce the clock speed, the, the transfer rate for parallel communication compared to a serial equivalent because of this skew especially. And this skew becomes worse and worse as you speed up it. So often you'll actually be able to transfer more data using a serial cable than a parallel cable despite this theoretical advantage. I just want to wrap this topic up by looking at some applications. So for serial, to be honest, almost all cables actually use the serial method. And this is especially true when we're dealing with medium to long range cables. So medium could be a meter, it could be a couple of meters. Long range could be thousands of kilometers potentially for undersea cables. But general connection systems, which is sort of medium to short range, are often serial as well. So USB stands for universal serial bus. That's what a USB cable looks like. If somehow you didn't know, that's micro USB here. That's done in serial. Parallel transmission is used very for very short range transfers. So within a computer, within integrated circuits, which are microchips, for kind of millipede looking 
components which are on your phone and your computer and actually the transfers throughout the chip itself might be done in parallel but the, the pins, this hasn't got many pins for this example, the pins may be used in parallel there, sort of the inputs and outputs um, to the microchip itself. Buses in a computer, especially peripheral buses, might be done in parallel and within components like memory, the transfers might be done in parallel. But actually the trend has definitely been to replace parallel buses, parallel circuits, uh, parallel, circuits parallel cables itself with serial ones. So for example, PCI, this is a PCI uh, bus here, connecting whatever this is, this card. And the PCI is used to um, add cards to your machines, like a graphics card you'll plug into the motherboard, it will have a PCI port. And the original version, PCI, was done in parallel, but the latest version, or late 2004 actually, PCI Express is done in serial. So the trend is definitely to replace parallel with serial, partially because speeds have increased so much that the SKU just becomes too much to deal with, and in fact, it's just better to do it in serial.